rest on for a statement, and I'll give the floor to uh, the Russian Federation. You have the floor. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. In spite of all the efforts of states, on a daily basis, we encounter various manifestations of racism and racial discrimination. It is a general threat, and we can only deal with it together. At the same time, the presence of serious discrepancies in the interpretation of problems and in approaches to how to handle them among UN member states, the major international agencies, and civil society has often created had a destructive impact on measures adopted. The lack of due international coordination leads to an increase in the manifestations of racism and the erroneous interpretation of freedom of expression to the spread of racist ideas and worldviews. We are convinced that references of some states to allegedly absolute nature of the right to self-expression are not only irresponsible, but also extremely dangerous. Such an approach contradicts the integrity of the concept of human rights. It negates the concept of the responsibility of the individual to society. Instead of fighting against these phenomena, the authorities of a number of states of Central Europe who bore the major brunt of World War II are openly indulging the practice of honoring the veterans of Waffen-SS units and different types of collaborators. Those who cooperated with, NASA, with Nazis and committed war crimes and crimes against humanity are declared national heroes and participants in national liberation movements. In a number of countries, there's a growing war against the statues and monuments honoring those who liberated Europe and the entire world from Nazism and fascism. Examples are easy to find. Very recently, the Minister of Defense of Latvia, Mr. Pabriks, stated that the Latvian uh, Waffen-SS legionnaires are the, the pride of the nation and an example for the younger generation. And in turn, on the 14th of October, throughout Ukraine, there were thousands of marches of nationalists and neo-Nazis, uh, during which there was homage paid to those who actively cooperated with Nazis and committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. And Mr. Chairman, the situation of hundreds of thousands of so-called non-citizens, and in fact discrimination against national minorities in the Baltic countries, cannot help but cause serious concern on our part. Uh, there are no positive changes whatsoever in protecting the languages of national minorities, especially the language of education. The gravity of this problem is not declining either in the Baltic countries or in Ukraine. Measures adopted in this area uh, can only be characterized as discriminatory. And in Ukraine, the Russian language has completely ended up in a double discrimination, not only with respect to the Ukrainian language, but EU languages as well. Mr. Chairman, achieving the right of peoples to self-determination is not only an historical uh, issue having only to do with anti-colonialism, it is also a contemporary reality, the free choice by all peoples of their political future under the UN Charter and the norms and principles of international law is possible only if we promote genuine observance of the rights of all peoples without use of double standards or advancing ephemeral interests of individual states and groups of states. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement on this agenda item 68. I think he wants to take the floor on uh, 69 as well.